Okay, so we're going to uh, create a template driven form uh, for your assignment. I'm gonna go over here a little bit to show you the assignment. Okay, so you're going to create two types of forms. The first type is the template driven. And this form here is gonna be used to add your form. Okay, so you create a flight component, which we added already. And that flight, add flight component, you're going to create a web form and you're going to use the template driven form format. Okay, so in our data, uh, if you recall in the flight data, we have this JSON data, right, or this object type. We have, you know, eight fields. Two, three, four, yeah, eight fields. And you would have to create a form that would, you know, accommodate all these eight fields and you can process them. And to put here more information about uh, what requirements you should put in your form. So the, the field names here, okay, this are again only uh, my recommendations. You can change them anything you want, doesn't matter. We can keep it as is. And then the type of data they are stored, right? Of course, you don't have to uh, force it to be that way, but you can. And then the minimum and maximum are characters, okay? So it'll be kind of similar to what I showed you. You can set that in the input tag and then uh, no duplicates. Okay, so we should no duplicates. So in this, this example as well, because we're not storing data in a database, um, we can check for uh, duplicates. Uh, for this class, however, I'm not gonna you know, hold you uh, accountable for this. Okay, I mean, it's uh, ideally it should be unique. So uh, if you know how to check, uh, make sure there's no duplicates, do so. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't have time to do it, don't worry about too much about it, okay? So, um, that's, that's not too critical. Um, so the flight number here, it's um, F1 numerical, it's ideal, uh, airline, uh, characters only, and then so on. So these are requirements you need to put inside your form controls. And then is basically here you're going to create a template driven form and then you're going to let the user uh, have a unique id um, or you can randomly generate one that's fine maybe this is a better way and then in the trip type okay the trip type here you're going to have three types it's either a one way round trip or multiple destination so you can use a drop down or you can do a selection list, right? For radio buttons, how we want to do it, that's that's fine. Because only one will be selected. And then you're going to create a function to handle the form submission. So uh, it's commonly uh, known to create a function called handle submit. Okay, it's not part of Angular. It's just a function you create. But handle submit will make sense. And then you pass to that function the entire form. Then you would then validate these forms as required. Okay, so make sure these are required. And I'll, uh, I'll show you using Angular validation system. It's really easy to do. Uh, um, maybe not easy, easy, but it's once you understand the logic, then it's easy. And then we're just gonna test that. Okay, so this is the add form. This is the actual data, right? We have the flight data have all these fields already. And this data here is a, um, just a file and the, and the application. So we're not going to physically, you know, delete or change this data. We could if you want to, but you can't uh, because it's the front end. Front end, you cannot change its content. So what we did was we basically create a, a variable, an object only. So once you run the program, all these data are not permanent. They are stored in RAM only. So you're able to delete and things like that in the RAM. But once you stop the program and rerun it again, everything is returned. If you remember the book example again, Ajax, you're able to delete data. And once all the data are gone, they're not permanently be gone. You will have to restart the application again and everything is returned, okay? So, so what we do so far is just loading data to a variable in RAM an object and this object will exist in the application as long as your app is running. And then towards the end of the uh, course, the last week when we do uh, the 
dependency injection. Okay, we're going to connect to a back end where we'll be adding and deleting data in the live database server. So in that time, the data are no longer part of the local object here, it's actual data from a live database system. And then those will be permanent. You can delete, update, and so on directly in that database. Okay, and you will use that by uh, using services and the Angular um, dependency injection system. But once you understand how this works locally here, then switching over to the database server side is not that different. Okay. All right. So uh, here in the app flight. All right. Um, so app flight here is this we're going to add the form. And I don't no, if I add, um, if I have, uh, did I provide any additional? No. Okay. Okay. Well, um, So, okay, so the flight, I'm gonna just uh, delete this. <clears throat> so to create a form and using the Angular uh, uh, template driven form, when I do that first, the add will be the template driven and then the uh, edit will be the um, reactive, okay? So if you want to follow, um, your CSS and your rules, uh, make sure you have the same structures. It looks kind of nice. Um, so if you go to like the flight list, okay, the structure here. Uh, no, not the flight list. We added to our root. Where's the root? Um, right here. Okay, so we have the class content main. Uh, let's see. Assets. What happened? Looks like assets to render. Okay, if you look in here, um, card. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to um, give you a, uh, a setup, like some of these tags here to make it look kind of nice already for you. So you don't have to do that yourself and you just have to fill out the form. And I will make that available and I'll add it to Blackboard. You can just copy that uh, template and use it. And your job is basically to create each of those elements, but the, the control will be um, added for you, okay? So I'll make it available uh, later, either today or um, tomorrow. So it looks nice, okay? But for now, we're gonna look at the, uh, the form control here. So you create your form just like this, your regular form like that, okay? And then inside that form, you go going to give it a name. Okay, this form must have a name, and if you remember, template driven forms, you can have the name of the form using the pound sign followed by a name. And um, I will call it just flight data form or whatever it is. And you're going to bind this to um, a directive called ng form. Okay, so this one tells Angular that, okay, this form here is called has a unique name called flight data form and is now uh, can be managed by Ang Angular form. You can access the content here, um, not directly, but you know from the source, if you pass data to the Angular, it knows where to find in the source. The reason why you give it a name is because if you remember in the web page, you could have many forms, right? right? A and B and C, of course. You can have all those different forms if you don't give it a unique name, Angular does not know where to get this data, right? So uh, just make sure you give it a unique name. And then usually then when you submit the form, 
you go into um, you know process the form either through a submission form or if you bind the data okay if you do a data binding then you don't have to right two two options so usually you do like uh, ng submit and then you bind that to a function i call it handle right handle submit you pass in this flight data here without the pound sign so now on the form you hit the submit button it's going to load everything to this variable called flight data form and you can access those data to this object flight data form dot whatever it is whatever it is right the name of that form and let's say that i'm going to just do a very simple one here um, input i put here like a label Okay, um, for we we'll give it an ID. Um, let's put here first name. Okay, first name. And you put here first name, right? And then and here you put your input. ID is first name. And you give it a name as well. It's usually the same name. The name fields need to be accessed in the form. The form. So it'll be form. This is form data form dot first name, right? You access that way. So you get the value from there. And then that would be the first name, right? And down here, I put a div and I put here the, um, the uh, button type. So you can put submit here, type will be button, I mean, uh, submit. And then uh, you put here, actually, yeah, I'm gonna do the Angular, uh, use the uh, bootstrap. Button type will be button. And then the um, class will be btn a button. I want it to be a medium, medium size, and I want the color to be uh, primary, so blue. All right? You add those classes there, and then you put the submit here. So something like that, right? And let's see what it looks like when I save this form. Save it in my application. I go to the flights app flight. So here's the form. And though it's not nice, I, I should remove this later. This is in the um, the chat component, but you can see that it has the form here. The button is already, you know, styled by Bootstrap. I did not style these using uh, Bootstrap. If I could, if you style using Bootstrap, then you can add this as a form control. And uh, it will make it look kind of nice, actually. Um, but you can see that if I click Submit, okay, it's going to load that in the back end, although we don't see it. Let's see if there's any errors in this control here. As you can see, no errors. Um, it's going to load that to the back end, and then you get the data. But then it has an error because we did not add any of the um, templates here yet. Okay, so one thing here we'll do before we go break is when you create forms, you have to go to the add module and import two um, really important um, class or, or module called forms module. You need that in order to work. Okay, so your form modules will be in here. So I'm going to go in then. Uh, create, let me see. Uh, show you here. Okay. So right here, it's kind of small, but you need this two one here. Okay, so the forms module, you need that sort of template driven. And then when you do the reactive forms, you must also import the reactive forms module to your main module. Okay, so you're gonna, since we're gonna use it anyway, you can do both all at once. So your root module, add module here, make sure you put that in there first, otherwise it won't work. And you saw the error down here. It says error occurred because there is no NG module scheme. It does not understand those, okay? Uh, I think I missed the label here. Um, so in the add module, you're going to go to the import module part here. And I did the forms module already. 
I need to also import a reactive forms module. Okay, so both of these need to be included in the add module and they should be a part of that up here in order for the forms to work in order for the ng thing to work we did this last time <clears throat> last time because we're doing the data binding two-way binding okay two-way binding needs the form module that's why it's there already so uh yeah we need that and then i think in my flight list i mistyped my label needs to be correct. Angular is kind of picky here. And the HTML doesn't care, but Angular does care. <clears throat> so, yes, I don't have the function yet, so I'm gonna create, create this function inside the source. And let me close all these, it's confusing now. Go to my flight component. I need a function here called a handle submit. And I put here form data as I do here. You can just call it whatever you want. Uh, maybe F for form. And then I'll console log F so you can see in the console, okay, what it looks like when I submit the button. So when I click the button here, when I click the submit, it's going to load this form, the handle submit form, I pass the form data to it. In this case, we only have one field, just this field, so you can see only one object. Okay, so uh, let's see if this works. So you go to put here, um, you know, uh, smile. Okay, it did, um, I probably have an error in there still. Yeah, it has some error. All right, um, yeah, we'll fix it when we come back on the break. So let's take a break first, we'll come back and then we'll continue with this form here okay and i'll also i'll see if i can um get a copy of that the layout for you so see you back in 10 minutes say 11 35. okay all right so i added a uh, link uh, to the site where you can download the um, code so if you go to um, the Blackboard, um, if you remember, if you go to your, go to the resources folder, I'll probably add a link here later too, but for now, resources folder. And if you remember, if you go to the NCLAT demos, you, all the demo files are found here. Inside here, you're going to see a file called forms or a folder called forms, you go in here then you will see this template here, okay? So if I open that, see what it looks like. Okay, so you can copy this and use this in your form, All right? So, uh, so I'm gonna copy this and uh, paste that to my form and I wanna see what that looks like. Okay, so in here, um, yeah, I'm gonna redo everything here. So let me turn this off. It has a nice uh, uh, CSS style rule already. And in this case, um, I'm submitting the form uh, through the event down here instead of in the submit form up here, okay? So a little bit different, but either way will work. But in this case, I'm gonna submit through the button and the button's gonna call a function to handle submit, which we have, I'm gonna pass the event to the event here is the same as if I go through the flight data form up here. Up here. Same idea. So again, I'm going to access to all the form elements uh, through that event. And then it's a, um, you can see it's a button, it's a blue, uh, should say icon, and then it's large. And then you, each of these is a row. Okay, one is a row. A row could contain, you know, um, multiple columns. <clears throat> so you could put like uh, three or four different columns in there to to um, have your field. So for example, this could be my one field, right? This is the second field and third field and so on. 
So if it max out that column, then you copy this, you move to the next row, and then row two and three and so on. So if I format, this looks a bit nicer. Okay, you see that this is the input field. And I wanna see what it looks like in the browser first, okay? So let's save this and load on the browser and see what it looks like. So here is a little bit nicer, as you can see. I added the information already here as well. Um, if I add the submit button here, of course, I must submit it. It's going to load the function I create, and it should put something in the console. I don't have anything, nothing yet to put yet. It just says mouse event. It prints the mouse event here because there's nothing passed to it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to remove this part here, and so we can start building this form, and we'll just do one or two fields. So you can see how data are worked and um, passed to the source. So in the root component, add component, I'm going to hide my child component. I also hide this part down here. So none of these will be visible. Just the out the outlet here. So back to square one, right? Wherever I go to, only shows that content. So here is the flight add. And then I'm going to add the fields. So back to the I flight here. So we're going to add one field here. And the field we're going to add here is the input field for the ID, right? So you have an ID, give it a name. Um, let's say the flight ID. Right. And then the name will be name will also be called ID. <clears throat> now there are lots of ways to do this. You can do it if you do a data binding, then if you remember if you data binding, you don't have to you don't if you need to um, submit the form. I mean you submit it of course, but uh, your data will actually automatically binds to a local variable in the um, in the uh, program in the source, right? So if you do it that way, then you don't need to, you know, uh, do much because the data already passed to the to that each each variable. The submit button will only submit it so you can validate your your data. Um, so let's see. I want to show something here. And I'm gonna just, I can't remember all these stuff. So so let's say we have the ID uh, ID field, the name is gonna be called ID as well. And we're going to use a type. So you can say the type has to be of type number, right? Only numbers can be used in this field. Um, you can set the minimum and maximum if you want. Right, so for example, you cannot have negative numbers, right? So you can say minimum is got to be um, what? I don't know, uh, one, right? The max can be anything you want, and I guess it doesn't matter. But also, you could say, you know, a thousand or ten thousand doesn't matter. That's the maximum I you can use for this field. If you notice, I put all these here because these are HTML um, attributes, right? The type. I mean, all these are HTML attributes. They're not Angular <clears throat> because I'm not, and I'm, I'm not binding to these attributes either. These are traditional um, HTML stuff. And then I want to also make this as required, right? Super required here. As you can see, you can do all those stuff here. And um, <clears throat> I see what else do we need. Yeah, I think that's all we need for that one, right? Just simple like that. So if I end it here, and we'll see what it looks like in the uh, form. And so if I load my form, here's the input. Here it is. If I type characters, it won't let me because I control, I let CSS, I mean, I let the DOM control it. 
has to be numbers. I cannot put negative numbers either. It should not let me do that. Um, but it's not going to be invalid. When you validate this, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, so if I go to a number that is larger than a thousand, it should also no, not let me do that. But that's the value. It's not the length, though. If you want to control the length of the characters, then you have to say, you know, a minimal length, right? Or max length, number of characters. But the value is the actual value itself. And so, and then what happens when we submit the form? Okay, if I put like five, submit the form, it loads the submit. And if I press F12, you will see it loads the submit here. It goes and it shows the mouse event only. Right, I'm, I'm not getting the actual data. It has the mouse event um, because why is it shown here? Well, because in our code, we, we load the event, a pass an event, and then this function here handles it, and the source code has the function and the event. I, add, I get that and I load that here. As you can see, it's loading the event, which in this case will be a click event. And um, so there are different ways to, to do this. And I wanted to use the other one. Let me see. I want to use a, um, a submit one. Let me see if I can get that for you. Let's see, this one here will work. No, not that one. Give me a second here. Something like that. Oh boy, yeah, my thing's all messed up here. Okay, well, let's go. Let's go back here first. Um, I'm probably going a little bit too too fast. Let's go back to the uh, unit four. I want to look at the notes here. Uh, right here. No, not this one. The Angular. Let's look at the form first. Okay. And look at the prepare and the template driven forms here. This is again. This is a note on the Angular site. I just put a PDF. You can see it, but you can also get it from Angular site. Uh, I'm going to go right down to the uh, example down here. Make it a little bit faster down here. Okay. You are data component. All right, so here we go. Get in there. Um, okay, so uh, here is the form, a very simple one, right? The input here, this is the classic way to do it. And you give it a name, and the, you can also add a class form control. So it's a form control uh, part of the Angular um, CSS. Um, but I wanted to use something a little bit more different. Uh, not that one. OK, so right here, this part here is how, I, how you actually bind data. right? Remember, we did the data binding. This is a two-way data binding. You can bind to a variable in the source code. Okay, so you make changes to this field, it automatically adds to that field. Okay, uh, it, it just loads the data, right? So instead of you know going and grabbing every field manually from the form, you will just bind that directly to an object, and all the data is there. Um, now, what I want to say here is like, if you remember in the traditional JavaScript, if I go here, if I put it down here, okay, just to show you the traditional way. So you have a form, like that, right? You have an input ID, or you give it a name is uh, first. You have another one, like that, right? First, last, uh, email, and so on. Now, when you submit this form, though, it's going to go to the script. And inside the script, it looks something like this. Or you could say, you give it a name here. The name will be, you know, um, F1. 
and you can say here, right, uh, form is equal to uh, documents that forms called F1, right? That's the form. And then I want to get, get the first name. So you would say F dot uh, first dot value, right? You get the value from from that first, uh, right? The first field. And then F will be, again, last that value and so on. So you get, you get each of these through the form object so you can get the data, right? Then we submit the form. You're going to load, find this form here and grab each of these fields directly and add it to a variable. And you can set it to here like a you know, first name, and then here will be last name, and so on, right? Okay. And then you build the form and you submit it. <clears throat> so instead of doing this way, you can bind each of these fields directly to the first name, last name field so that you don't need to go through the F1 or through the F at all, right? And then when you submit, you just basically validate these, make sure they're all correct, and then you submit the form, you make the changes to the actual source, okay? So that's what I mean by um, uh, binding data. So what I mean, so in that case up here, we can say, okay, this is ID field. I'm gonna bind this to the ID field using this, uh, if you remember this ng model, this is a two-way binding. Bind it to a, a variable called maybe flight dot id. Okay, I have a flight. This is a new flight information has id field. I'll bind that directly to that field. So when I make changes, that data has it. So in the source code, you're going to have a variable in here somewhere. In here, you're going to have a variable called flight, and this is going to be an object. Um, Okay, an object of information, All right? And so you're gonna have here the ID field flight of ID, has an ID field, um, yeah, it has an ID field, and this will be mapped directly to your data. I mean, over in my data here, looks just like this. So if I copy this, right, and I put it right here, it will look something like that. This is a single flight. And so I'm going to map that field to the flight ID, the flight airline, flight plan number, and so on. So that when I make changes, it's going to go in here. So initially, there's nothing here yet. So you can put here nothing. You can put null if you want, empty. All these will be just empty fields. But I have my data here pre created for you, for me, right? So all these will be available. But then no content. Okay, so here's the flight. And then I'm going to uh, bind the flight data, which I did already. I bind this field to the flight.id. And it's going to change this flight ID here, whatever I changes I make. And then I do another one for the airline flight number and so on. So if I were to go over here and add two more fields, like this two here, it goes from here and then here. This will be the um, airline. I'll give it all the same name so that they are things. So type will be just text. And uh, whatever the minimum requirement is, airline will be, let's just say that minimum, um, you can say whatever you want. What do I say in the in the sheet is required, and if it binds to the flight airline, and here would be the flight number. Number, and uh, it'll be um, text. Minimum you want to have at least uh, three characters, and max would be let's just say you know six. I don't know, and you bind that. Okay, so when I submit this button, um, this event here is not going to grab this data here because I'm not passing this form data. If I pass the form data to it, yeah, it's going to grab all these as well. So instead of saying event, I could pass the form data here. And let me do that here now. Let me just go here and pass in the form data to that field. So you can see what that may look like. 
And uh, so I'm going to save this just in case. And we'll see if this works over here now. All right, so I'm going to reload this form. Okay. And here are my three fields. Of course, not that nice yet. But if I click um, submit, okay, you see some, you see that it, it loads here now on the left side. Before it was a mouse event because I'm passing the form data, I can actually get the actual content here. Okay, well, let me do it again. Put some stuff in here. I put here uh, 23, uh, flight LM will be like say United, and then here is uh, UA123. Okay, click submit. Okay, so it goes to the form, a, a console log that you can see here. And if you drill this down, you're going to see the actual content in this uh, form here. So uh, the, the form, okay, it says valid. We'll talk about this later. We'll do validations. The value here, this value field that has my information. Okay, so again, the form control is the uh, form data. If I get dot value, I'm going to get all these value here because there's a lot of uh, information here. You don't want to get all of these here unless you want to, but I'm interested only in the value. So here gives me those three fields because I only have three fields. Okay, so in my source code, when I submit the form, I get the F here. This F is the entire form. I log the F. That's why I got everything. If I just want the value, then I put here F dot value. Okay, if I do it again now, <clears throat> okay, here we go. I put here uh, equal five, United, and then UA123 again. Okay, now you see that I'll drill down and I just want the value return and omit the rest. So I got my ID, I got my uh, flight year line, I guess the order is nine point here, it doesn't matter. And I got my information I want. All right. So now I get the data because I pass everything to that foreign object. And so you can see that now you can get the flight name, flight number, ID, and so on. And so what you do is if you do it this way, if you're not binding data, since I'm binding the data already, I'm gonna get both, okay? Um, so for example, if I go and also output the flight, okay, remember, uh, it'll be this flight. This data is bound. So I bind the ID, the airline, and flight number. And these will be empty, but these three fields should have the same data. All right? So we go again. Put here 555, United, and UA. So as you can see, here it is. The first one is from the form. Okay, I only show three fields because I only had three fields. The second is the entire flight object. Okay, you can see all the fields are here, only the ones that were updated because I only have those three fields and I updated the flight airline, the flight number and the ID. The other rest, the rest will be retained, remain as empty. Okay, so I have a direct data binding here. If that's the case, I don't really care about the second part, right? The second part, it doesn't matter um, because I'm still gonna get the data anyway. Okay, so what I mean is like here, when I when I do this, I don't need to pass in the data at all. I don't want, I don't need to. Um, it could be something else because it doesn't matter. Because once I hit the submit button, I'm gonna get those data. I could put here just just some stuff. Um, back to the event, right? If I put event, it'd be like mouse event stuff. So now, because it's an event, this is no longer valid. Um, I don't need that. I'm just going to show the flight data. So you will see that it actually, the data actually comes through. And my submit button only shows the output here. That's all it's doing. So again, uh, 2, 5, 6, United. And so here it is, right? The ID, the actual flight data is now altered or updated because these are bound using two way data binding. So once I get this new data, if it's all filled in the way I like, then I'm gonna push this new data to my original flight list, okay? So if I wanna see my actual flight list, I would do this as well. So I can say, 
um, I'm going to have a all the flights, plural, is going to be from my flight um, flight list. Is it called flight data? Yeah, flight data. Um, yeah, from the flight data list, right? So it'll be this guy here. This one has all the flight data. And I'm going to print the all flights to the information, the console as well as you can see. This is all the flights. This is the original one. This is the new flight. Okay, so you can see that now if I refresh my page, I show these numbers, United and UA123. Okay, so here it is. This is just this form, the new flight. This is the existing flight. I have 10 of those. You can see everything is here. So now if I want to push this new flight to that list, I'm adding a new flight. I just push it to the array and I'm done. Okay. So when you validate your form, everything looks good here. All right, I like it the way it is. And then when I submit it, I'm going to push it to the flight. So here I will show the before and then I will show here the after. So with this flight, that push, I'm gonna push the new flight to that list. And then I'll console log this again. So you can see that new flight has now added, it has been added to the original list. Okay, so here we go. I put here, um, Six United um, Express, and then you a and we put you e one two three. So now you see this is the new flight. This is the original flight. We added to the new the flight to it. You can see that now it has added flight number one two three. I mean uh, flight ID number three four five six. And if we should here, of course, some of these fields are empty because I did not validate them. So you cannot have empty fields when you validate. So that's how you add data to your original flight. And because we, we did that, it's in RAM, it's live, right? If I go back to my flight, you're going to see it's been added to the list as well. And this is only in RAM, by the way. So because it's only in RAM, of course, if I refresh my app, everything's going to be gone or restart my app. So you have two options here when you submit your form. Either you pass in all the, the entire form object to it, and you don't have to bind these data. If you don't bind it, then you have to submit the form and then grab, grab it from here. If you do a data binding, and there's no need to do that here. It's redundant, right? You don't need to do it. So it's entirely up to you. Ideally, you would bind it. Minus your data is live, and then um, and then you have to validate it. So the question is that how do you validate if it's already bound to that field? Okay, but, but if I do it this way, right? Once I get the data, I can go through every field and check if they meet the requirement. If it's not, I can spit out some errors or do not push it to the new list to the to the uh, original list. But if you do a data binding this way, then you must have a different way to validate this before you submit the form or before it adds it. And that's the Angular built-in validator. We're gonna do that next time. All right, so this is how you will build this uh, form here. First, create a flight model here, okay? Just a template that has all the fields that you need for that. Again, just copy from the original flight data and empty that list. And then bind that to every field you have. And this function here is needed because the only time I submit the form is not I'm gonna get the data, I'm going to push that new flight to the original list. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, because I found everything here. And then you have to import that flight list, the flight data, original flight, to this component so you can alter that data. Okay, I did here is, you know, I, I actually create a local variable here like this. You don't have to, right? You could access directly the flight data. 
I could go here and just say, you know, write data, not push. And that's fine because I'm not reusing this in the class here because this is just the actual class uh, variable that points directly to this actual flight object. So if, if I'm not reusing um, inside in my class here, just for the purpose of you know pushing data to that list or deleting data in that list, then I don't really need to be declared inside here. There's no need to, because it's, I can access directly um, there. Uh, yeah, it should work. And so if you do that though, you cannot use the word this, it'll be just the regular flight data object. And this is not part of the class. It does not belong in the class here. As you can see, it's not a property here. It's just a direct reference to the original data. But certainly, yes, you can access it, absolutely. And you can see if I go back to the add and uh, do, you know, 678 and I express two and six. Okay, we add that here. And if we go back to the flights, you see that it's been added down here as well. And notice the original one is gone because we, we blow the page. So if I go back and add it again, add a new one, I'll put it here two, four, five, six, and put it back to United, United, one, two, three, I add it. Again, notice my page does not refresh. Okay, that's why I say, I say it's important to make sure your page don't reload. If it loads, then your data will not be retained. So as you can see, if you go to the bottom, and there it is, okay? I retain the data because I didn't refresh it. If I refresh my page, you see it's all gone. It's temporary, it's only in RAM. That's why it's important, make sure your pages don't reload. If it loads, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna retain the data because once we load it, data are gone. 